Good morning. Well, welcome to worship uh, here on this beautiful morning. Um, today we're focusing in on faith, on what faith means, on what faith inspires. Um, and inspiration is an interesting word. Um, being inspired literally means being breathed into. That's what inspired means. And so as we talk about the Holy Spirit, um, and inspiration from the Holy Spirit. We're talking about being breathed into by the Holy Spirit. And being breathed into by the Holy Spirit is what inspires faith, is what inspires a capacity to have hope for things that we have not seen yet. And being breathed into by the Holy Spirit is what allows for us to be daring enough and bold enough uh, to have convictions for things that we may not have any proof for. And so we begin worship by thinking about what inspires our faith, what breathes into us and gives us the capacity to dare to say we are God's people, what breathes into us and give us the capacity to dare enough and to be bold enough to demonstrate love towards neighbors, but maybe not just neighbors, but strangers, and maybe not just strangers, but even enemies. What makes us bold enough to declare we are God's people and to demonstrate that uh, through the way we live in the world, through the way that we use our gifts and talents, um, through the way we walk in every aspect of our lives. And so today we, we think about faith. Uh, we think about faith and how faith is able to spark us, to give us life, to move us in new and interesting and often challenging ways. So, with that in mind, we begin by taking a breath, right? That's why we start with that breath. That's why I think it's so important to begin with that breath, because we are inviting God literally into our bodies, into our lungs. We are, we are doing the physical act of being inspired, of letting the Holy Spirit be breathed into our bodies. So, with that in mind today, let us begin by taking in that breath of the Holy Spirit. Take a big, deep breath in. And let it out. Invite the presence of God into your body by another big breath. And breathe out. Seek out God's transformation in yourself and in your heart and breathe in. And breathe out for the sake of the world. Now I invite any children or youth or children at heart who would like to come forward and gather with me around the font to remember uh, that we are gods and that here these waters remind us of, of who we are and whose we are. Come on up, I see you wondering. Just, yeah, just come on up. All right, we begin here with water. Here, the place where God says, you are mine. And I call you my son, I call you my daughter, I call you my precious child now and forever. And I promise that every single time that you take a breath, that that is me being with you that I am the one who is with you even when you're scared and I'm the one that is with you that gives you joy. So get your hand into the water and say a little prayer with me. Say, dear God, thank you for calling me yours. Help me to live as your child today. Amen. All right, so now take a little bit of that water. Make the sign of the cross on your own forehead to remind yourself of that promise. Get your hand wet a second time. Make the sign of the cross on somebody else around this font. And a third time, get your hand wet and get a few people wet as you go back to your seat to remind them that they too are children of God. And now please rise as you're able as we sing our opening hymn. We sing, You Are Holy. Um, and as we sing the song, we'll sing it all the way through once, all together. And then I'm going to split you up 
this side you're gonna be group one, this side you're gonna be group two. I'll let you know when it's your turn to start singing as we celebrate what it means to be God's people. now together let us confess and ask for God's forgiveness. Come, all you faithful ones, and worship the Lord. Come, heirs of the promise, and worship the Lord. Come, all who hope in Christ, and worship the Lord. We confess our sins before God and one another. God of our ancestors, we admit that at most times we are anything but faithful. We put our trust in impermanent things. We long for flimsy honors and meaningless admiration. We have failed to be your humble servants. We have used the law as a club against our opponents. We have forgotten your command to love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, in your great compassion. Amen. Jesus, our great high priest, has completed and perfected our salvation through his death and resurrection. Be glad, be grateful, be at peace. Your sins are forgiven. You are forever God's children. You are free by the grace of our Lord. Amen.
God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. the Holy Spirit in glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people. Now together, let us pray our prayer of the day. Trustworthy God, you are good to your word, and generations have witnessed your blessings. Make us bold to believe your promises, even when we may not see their fulfillment within our lifetimes. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated.
So for today's um, children's message, I want to preach to the child in the heart of everyone who's here. <laughs> so you're all a part of it. Because uh, today we're focusing on faith. And I think faith is a really robust thing to talk about that is really complicated, but at the same time, simple. Um, so I just want everybody to close your eyes. So everybody close your eyes. And I want you to ask yourself a question. Can you believe that I'm still in this room, meaning Felix Malpica, with your eyes closed? Can you believe that Felix Malpica is still here? Okay, open your eyes. So, who can say they believe I was still in this room? Anyone? Yeah, did anybody have difficulty? believing I was still here? No? Oh, okay. All right. Why? What made it easy for you to believe that I was still in this room? You could hear my voice? That's helpful. And you saw me, right? That's helpful. All right. You didn't see me run. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That's good, right? Um, so sometimes all it requires for us to have faith is to listen for God's voice. That's what we believe as Lutherans, that is core to who we are, that, that the word of God inspires within us faith. And that we as people of God have to always have our ears trying to have them in tune, trying to listen to the voice of God at work in your life, at work in the world, the voice of God as we hear it through scripture, the voice of God and the word of God as, as was here with us for some time in the person of Jesus Christ and that faith. Um, is an ability to believe that God is still here because we listen for his voice, we have heard his voice, we hear his word, and we can continue to boldly, boldly walk in this world as though God is with us here still. So, find times to close your eyes and listen for God's voice in your life. All right, now we continue with our first reading. <coughs> Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. Today we have a reading from Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 to 10, and verse 13. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority. With soldiers under me, I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, I say, come, and he comes. And to my slave, I say, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. may be seated for our sermon reading. And I've been telling you along that uh, this 
this writing in Hebrews is actually a sermon that was given to a congregation to try and get them to another level. They had kind of just lost the zest of what it meant to be a, a truly life-giving congregation that kind of plateaued and they were just kind of humming along. And so this sermon was meant to inspire them, to bring them back up. And so I'm going to read a, a longer section of the reading today than, than what is printed. I'm actually going to read the whole chapter of Hebrews 11. And um, I want you to hear it as a sermon. Uh, this is a sermon for you, a sermon on faith and what faith is. So listen to this sermon um, to a people who need inspiration, who need the Holy Spirit to give them new life in the midst of the congregation. Faith is the assurance of things you have hoped for, the absolute conviction that there are realities you've never seen. It was by faith that our forebears were approved. Through faith, we understand the universe was created by the word of God. Everything we now see was fashioned from that which is invisible. By faith, Abel presented to God a sacrifice more acceptable than his brother Cain's. By faith, Abel learned he was righteous as God himself testified by approving his offering. And by faith, he still speaks, although his voice was silenced by death. By faith, Enoch was carried into heaven so that he did not see death. No one could find him because God had taken him. Before he was taken up, it was said of him that he had pleased God. Without faith, no one can please God because the one coming to God must believe he exists and he rewards those who come seeking. By faith, Noah respected God's warning regarding the flood, the likes of which no one had ever seen, and built an ark that saved his family. In this, he condemned the world and inherited the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham heard God's call to travel to a place he would one day receive as an inheritance, and he obeyed, not knowing where God's call would take him. By faith. He journeyed to the land of the promise as a foreigner. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, his fellow heirs to the promise, because Abraham looked ahead to a city with foundations, a city laid out and built by God, by faith. Abraham's wife, Sarah, became fertile long after menopause had, because she believed God would be faithful to his promise. So far from this man, so from this man who was almost at death's door, God brought forth descendants, as many as the stars in the sky and as impossible to count as the sands on the shore. All these I have mentioned died in faith without receiving the full promises, although they saw the fulfillment as though from a distance. These people accepted and confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on this earth because people who speak like this make it plain that they are still seeking a homeland. If this was only a bit of nostalgia for a time and place, up in a place they left behind, then certainly they might have turned around and returned. But such saints as these look forward to a far better place a heavenly country. So God is not ashamed to be called their God because he has prepared a heavenly city for them by faith. Abraham, when he endured God's testing, offered his beloved son Isaac as a sacrifice. The one who had received God's promise was willing to offer his only son. God had told him, it is through Isaac that your descendants will bear your name. And he concluded that God was capable of rising him from the dead, which figuratively is indeed what happened. By faith, Isaac spoke blessings upon his sons, Jacob and Esau, concerning things yet to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed the sons of his son, Joseph, bowing in worship as he leaned upon his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the his life's end, predicted that the children of Israel would make an exodus from Egypt, and he gave instructions that his bones be buried in the land they would someday reach. By faith, 
Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was handsome and they did not fear Pharaoh's directive that all male Hebrew children were to be slain. And by faith, Moses, when he was grown, refused to identify solely as the son of Pharaoh's daughter and chose instead to share the sufferings of the people of God, not just living in sin and ease for a time. He considered the abuse that he and the people of God had suffered in anticipation of the anointed one, more valuable than all the riches of Egypt because he looked ahead to the coming reward by faith. Moses left Egypt, unafraid of Pharaoh's wrath and moving forward as though he could see the invisible God. Through faith, he instituted the Passover and the sprinkling of blood on the doorposts among the Hebrews so that the destroyer of the firstborn would pass over their homes without harming them. And by faith, the people crossed through the Red Sea as if they were walking on dry land, although the pursuing Egyptian soldiers were drowned when they tried to follow. By faith, the walls of Jericho toppled after the people had circled them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab welcomed the Hebrew spies into her home so that she did not perish with the unbelievers. And I could speak more of faith. I could talk until time itself ran out. If I continued, I could speak of the examples of Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, of David and Samuel and all the prophets. I could give accounts of people alive with faith who conquered kingdoms, who brought justice, obtained promises, and closed the mouths of hungry lions. I could tell you how people of faith doused raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, made the weak strong, and stoking great valor among the champions of God, sent opposing armies into panicked flight. I could speak of faith, bringing women, their loved ones, back from death, and how the faithful accepted torture instead of earthly deliverance because they believed they would obtain a better life in the resurrection. Others suffered mockery and whippings. They were placed in chains and in prisons. The faithful were stoned, sawn in two, killed by the sword, clothed only in sheepskins and goatskins. They were penniless, afflicted, and tormented. The world was not worthy of these saints. They wandered across deserts, crossed mountains, and lived in the caves, cracks, and crevices of the earth. These, though commended by God for their great faith, did not receive what was promised. The promise has awaited us, who receive the better thing that God has provided in these last days, so that with us our forebears might finally see the promise completed. So, since we stand, surrounded by all those who have gone before us, an enormous cloud of witnesses let us drop every extra weight, every sin that clings to us and slackens our pace, and let us run with endurance the long race set before us. Now, stay focused on Jesus, who designed and perfected our faith. He endured the cross and ignored the shame of that death because he focused on the joy that was set before him. And now he is seated beside God on the throne, a place of honor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I feel a little strange trying to preach after that. <laughs> That's the sermon, right? But, but I do want to continue. I want to continue because there are more stories of faith. 
There are more stories of faith, like the faith of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who dreamt of a world where we could be joined together, where we'd be judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. That man had faith, and he did not see that dream come to fruition, but we are still working by faith. We have seen the people of this community, of Faith Lutheran Church, take on daring endeavors to, to make a place where people can live right here next to the church, 12 condos, and it might be the, the most inexpensive place for those people to live. In the whole city, this community had a daring faith to say, we will make a place for you where you can live, where you can grow old, and where we can care for you and nurture you. And this community has done that. This community, by faith, built a daycare where we could offer care and love to children of this community at, again, the most inexpensive place in town so that people could afford it, so that people could continue to work. We offer that in faith. In faith, this community also created an endowment so that there might be resources for the sake of the ministry of this congregation, not just now, but to continue on beyond those who haven't seen the promise come to fruition. And by faith, the ELCA did some really amazing things this last week. As I was at the churchwide assembly in Milwaukee, the whole church gathered. The whole church, the entire national ELCA body, gathered together to declare by faith that this church is a church that has things to ask for forgiveness for. As a whole church body, the ELCA in faith said, we have been complicit in systems of racism, in systems of oppression, and the whole ELCA church body made a declaration of, of repentance that the ELCA as a church body that's 97% white might say we have been complicit in those systems of injustice and we ask for forgiveness and that was out of faith a deep faith of yearning for a world that is different than the one we currently live in out of faith that it, gathering of people also too denounced all that goes into making women uncomfortable and victims of violence. To say that we as a church openly denounce all of the systems at place that keep women at a lesser level than their male counterparts. To denounce that we have a culture where rape happens. This church made that declaration and, and also counted its complicity but also rejoiced. Rejoiced that by faith 50 years ago, the first woman became a pastor in the ELCA. And that 40 years ago, the first woman of color became a pastor in this church. And that 10 years ago, the first woman openly LGBTQIA became a pastor of this church. In faith, this church uh, made a declaration last week that we will honor with ordination those who serve in word and service, those we call deacons. That yes, we ordain those who are called to word and sacrament, but those who are called to proclaim God's word in the world and also work through service in churches and in the world also are ordained and called by God. By faith, this church has been doing a lot, and, and we took a step by faith that we don't even know quite what it means yet. The ELCA as a whole declared that we as a church body will be sanctuary, that we will be a safe place for all people, that we can be a home for the homeless, that we can be a place for those who don't have a place to feel at home or safe or comfortable can run to the ELCA and we will say yes to our baptismal promises to love our neighbors no matter where they're from, what language they speak, the color of their skin, their sex or sexual identity. We are a place of safety and that is us by faith trying to make real a world that we can only dream of. And so by faith we continue in that walk, by faith. 
And by faith, it requires a big breath, right? It requires a big breath because that's an awful lot to do by faith and an awful lot to do still. And so we take that big breath of, oh, God, give me the courage, give me the strength, give me the power to do what is necessary to make this world look more and feel more like God's dream. A world where there is peace and love and justice for every single human being. That is what we do by faith. That at every time we baptize a child and every time we remember our own baptism, we say yes to God's dream. And that we, by faith, will be daring and bold enough to declare we can work towards a place where there is peace and love and justice for all people, even if, even if we may not ever see it in our lifetimes. We have faith that it will be so and that God's people, God's hands, will have a part in making this world also resemble God's kingdom so that every single person will be able to feel the amazing abundance of God's love in the world. Amen. Please rise as you are able, as we sing our sermon hymn.
Gospel Screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all those who are in need of your grace. God, we pray for the ELCA as it has ended another church-wide assembly. We give you thanks for the many leaders of this church, for the re-elected presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, for the new officials within her office, for our new church secretary, for the new church council that was elected, and the many people who were elected into new offices as bishops all around this country, we pray that they might lead by faith and that they might lead this church into creating a world that looks more and more like your dream. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up to you all of our elected officials, those who work in our local governments, our state governments, and national government, that your Holy Spirit might breathe into their lungs as well and guide them to be partners with us in making a world of peace, love, and justice. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up all those who are suffering in this world, in China because of the rains and storms, suffering because of more mass shootings, suffering because of families being torn apart, suffering for many different ways, God. We lift them up to you and pray that you might hold them in the palm of your hand. Lord, in your mercy. God, we lift up to you those who are near and dear to our hearts, those in our community who need you to show up. We pray for John Spoden, Colleen Schroeder, John Tollison, Ann Nazer, Beverly Shaber, Isaac Johnson, Jean Arnold, Joey Polzine, Nancy Wilson, Mary Jacobson, Mick and Toots Jensen, Brian Whitney, Jamie Malfi, Joanne Malfi, Ann Aldrich, Gladwin Helmy, and all those who we name out loud now. God, we lift up to you all those named out loud and those named in the quietness of our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray that Faith Lutheran Church might be breathed into by your Holy Spirit, that we may continue to take steps forward in faith, to boldly walk as your children, that we may live into our mission to be people of God, empowered by your word and sacrament to reach out in love. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you all share a sign of God's love with one another. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for all of the gifts that you have given to us, ourselves, our time, our possessions, and our faith. We pray that we might see all of these gifts as gifts to be shared so that all might know and experience your great abundance in this world. Amen.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life when we turned away and our love failed. Your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. And spoke to us through the prophets, and so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their honor. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. De igual manera, después de haber cenado, él tomó la copa, dio gracias y la dio a beber a todos, diciendo, Esta copa es el nuevo pacto en mi sangre derramada por ustedes y por todo el mundo para el perdón del pecado. Hagan esto en memoria mía. And now gathered together as one church all around the world, let us proclaim who you are through the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You are all welcome to come and participate at this table of mercy. Whether you are a guest, whether you're new, if you have doubts in your heart or this is your favorite table to come and feast at, you are welcome. That includes children who are gathered with us today if they haven't taken communion in before or even if they're just curious and they want to extend their hand out to receive the bread, I will reach back and I will put Christ into the palm of their hand because I am not the host at this table, but it is Jesus Christ. And Jesus always stands with arms wide open, so please come. The table is ready. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ grant you grace and keep you in his peace now and forever. Amen.
We have somebody doing announcements. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. I'm doing the announcements this morning as a member of church council representing the education committee. First, I'd like to thank Pastor Felix for his presence and his vision, his faith at the ELCA assembly last week. Um, he represents all of us and we thank him for that. We've just finished two really special weeks um, of summer activities for our children. Two weeks ago, we had our Faith's Little Friends ministry outreach. It was a great success. Each morning we met and worked with those children. And um, the last week we had day camp for our elementary age children. We had so many hands that made those weeks successful. So we'd like to say thank you to the kids who were there and their parents for so many of the volunteers who offered their time, who provided and served treats and lunches, and those who helped with donations, and the committee and council members who had fellowship and dinners with our counselors. We thank Yvonne Mitchell. She hosted our counselors so they could all stay at one home all week, and she provided them that special TLC that she has. And, um, would also like to say thank you, a huge shout out for Jessica Malpica, her leadership, her planning, her organization. She truly did a fantastic job, so let's appreciate Jessica. And Joel um, took the lead in um, leading our kids last week for music, and thank you, Joel, for sharing not just your time, but your talent. Thank you. Two quick reminders, September is right around the corner, and we'd like to remind you that there's a sign-up sheet in the gathering space for the Sunday treats before worship. We thank Francie Anderson for organizing this fellowship for everyone. It begins in September, so take a look at those dates. Um, another special reminder to sign up for September 8th. It's the Feast of Love. It's the God's Work Our Hands Sunday. There's a sign up, um, there are several sign up sheets, lots of activities to take a look at and see how you might be able to serve and help on that special day. Um, thank you, I hope that you enjoy this beautiful, beautiful summer morning. And just a couple of quick things before a blessing. Um, there was a lot that happened at the church-wide assembly. I did not have a time to highlight even half of it. Um, so there will be sessions to come. Um, uh, I'll be in discussion with council on how we want to do that, how we want to let people know on all of the many different things that was happening uh, at the churchwide assembly. So just have an eye out for it um, that we will be talking. I'll be letting you know. And if you want to know before then, feel free to just call me. We're like, okay, Felix, tell me. What was all that about? Uh, I'd be more than happy to come meet you at your home, meet you at a coffee shop, uh, and, and talk a little bit further about what that church-wide assembly was and what it meant for us. Um, also, I want to lift up uh, Joey Paulzine. His wife, Laura, passed away uh, two weeks ago, and the funeral will be on Thursday here. Um, and I just, it, it was really a moment of faith. So I just want to share that short story. Um, I got a phone call here at the, ch the church, uh, and it just felt like I needed to go. I needed to go and visit, and so I went to her home, and uh, she was laying, uh, sitting in her chair. Joey was there. Their son, Kurt, was there, and they said, you know, we're ready. I'm ready to go home. I'm ready to be done suffering, and so we prayed together we shared a very sacred moment of doing a special service of accepting death. We shared communion together one last time, and I gave her a hug right as I was going out, and I told her, get some rest. And she looked at me with just peaceful eyes and said, I will. And I left, and two hours later, she was in the palm of God's hand. Um, so by faith, she was able to face that last hours, not with any fear, but just with grace. Uh, and so thank God for that kind of faith. Um, so now, let us rise and receive one final blessing.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to sing, Guide My Feet. I'm going to call out the verses, so just the very first line, and then you're going to join me in singing the rest of the verse. Guide my feet while I run this promise to be people of God. I will. And I will love my neighbors to the best of my ability. Do you promise to be empowered by word and sacrament? I will remember every day that I'm a child of God through baptism, inspired by the word and strengthened by holy communion. Do you promise to reach out in love? May my heart be open to do God's will each day. Go in peace and remember your promise. Thanks be to God, and we will.